Okay, let's see if the relationships that we found out about spheres and cylinders will help us find a formula for the volume of a sphere. Now we learned that if you have a sphere and a cylinder that have the same height and the same radius or the same circle involved, um, that you can get one and a half spheres into one cylinder, or you can get uh, or one sphere takes up two-thirds of a cylinder. So we know how to find um, the volume of a cylinder. Um, you do that by multiplying or finding the base and the base of a cylinder is a circle. Find the area of a circle by multiplying pi r squared. That gives you the bottom layer of the cylinder. And then height would give you the number of layers. So if you multiply pi r squared times height, that's going to give you the volume of a cylinder. So I really only need to have two-thirds of it. So I need two-thirds of this uh, formula that I came up with. Of means multiplication, so two-thirds of means multiply pi r squared times h. Now, I need to make this a fraction to multiply, and then I just multiply straight across, and now I have 2 pi r squared times h divided by 3. So, as I look at this, I'm trying to decide what h means to a sphere which is just a three-dimensional circle, that it doesn't really have a height per se. Instead, the height is actually the diameter. Um, and I don't have a diameter over here in my um, formula, but I do have a radius, and I know that the diameter equals 2 of the radius. So I'm going to replace height with 2r. So I have 2 pi r squared times 2r, all divided by 3. Um, so now uh, I want to multiply some things that I know how to multiply. And with multiplication, you can rearrange. It doesn't matter because 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. So I'm going to do some rearranging. And I'm going to move the 2 times 2 together. And then I'll leave the pi. And then r squared means r times r, and then I have another r. It's still all divided by 3. Now I'm going to do the things I know how to do. I know how to do 2 times 2. That's 4. Um, pi is still just there. And r times r times r is actually r to the third power. And I keep that all divided by 3. So now if I have a sphere and its radius is 3 centimeters, I can find the volume of that sphere. So I have 4 times 3.14 times, and my radius is 3, and I need to multiply that 3 times and divide by 3. Okay, so I can do this in any order I want. So I'm going to do 3 times 3 times 3. Well, 3 times 3 is 9. Times 3 again is 27. And then times 4. 27 times 4. 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 2 is 10. Um, and then I still need to multiply that times pi. So... Um, to multiply with that decimal, I'm just going to ignore it for now. 8 times 4 is 32. 4 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3. 4 times 1 is 4. Placeholder, ignore that. 1 times 8, 1 times 0, 1 times 1. Two placeholders. 3 times 8 is 24. 3 times 0 is 0 plus 2, and 3 times 1 is 3, and then add 2, 8 and 3 is 11, 4 and 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9, 
2 plus 1 is 3, and it's playing 3. Now I can deal with that uh, decimal, and I have two numbers behind the decimal in my problem, so I need 2 in my answer. So it's 339.12. But I still need to divide by 3. So I have 339.12 divided by 3. Um, how many 3's in 3? There's 1. Multiply, subtract, get 0, bring down the next 3. How many 3's in 3? 1. 3 times 3 is 9. Subt or, I'm sorry, 3 times 1 is 3. Subtract and get 0, bring down the next number. How many 3's in 9? 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract and get 0. My decimal is just going to go up there in my answer. Bring down the 1. How many 3's in 1? There aren't any. Bring down the next number. How many 3's in 12? There are 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Subtract and get 0. So the volume of my sphere is 113.04 centimeters cubed. So there's the formula that we used, and we got that from using that relationship that we found between spheres and cylinders.